welcome to HBC 101. I had all the no's, but I got that one. I didn't give up. Sound in the building. <laughs> drum major for Morehouse's House of Funk. What's up everyone and welcome to HBCU 101. I am your host, Jaleel Thurman. HBCU 101 is a show that will take you all over the nation, giving you the ins and outs of HBCUs, a little taste of that HBCU flavor. On today's episode, we take a trip and talk with a distinguished individual down in Marshall, Texas. But before we dive into that, let's check out our HBCU news and see what's buzzing in our community. Thanks, Jaleel. One day we might decide the 2020 election, but don't hold your breath for now. But no matter how it goes down, there is no doubt that Kamala Harris, a proud graduate of Howard University, has been an inspiration to many young girls and women across the country. You will not be able to tell the story of this historic election without Harris, the vice presidential nominee on Joe Biden's Democratic ticket. Let's get back to HBCU 101 with Jaleel Thurman. Many know him for his love of education, while those at Wiley College love him for his dedication to the growth of that institution. HBCU 101 is honored to sit down with Edward Waters College alum, Jackson State University alum, co-founder of Health, CEO and president of Wiley College, Dr. Herman J. Felton Jr. Doc, welcome to the show. Man, <laughs> I'm uh, happy to be here, Jaleel. Happy to be here, brother. Thank you for having me, man. I really appreciate it. And thank you for uh, the kind words and the introduction, man. I appreciate it. No, Doc, no, thank you. I, to have such a distinguished individual like yourself to join us means a lot. So I appreciate you. But let, let's- No problem, brother. Now- We're Just out here doing the work, man. You've been doing a lot of work. So let's start there. Doc, HBCUs have been something for you that you have had a love with for 20, almost 30 years, I'm sure. Let's, let's, let's before we dive into that, let, let's talk Jacksonville, Florida. Doc, you from Jacksonville. You know, your uh, opportunities with education are a little different. You were a non-traditional student at Edward mm -hmm. Waters College. Mm -hmm. You went to the military first and you came back and you had a goal set in mind that you would achieve a higher education than just high school, a high school diploma. Let's talk about, you know, why Edwards College? And then let's talk about, you know, your experience at, at Edward Waters. You know, uh, Jaleel, Jacksonville in some places was like a concrete jungle. Uh, growing up in a product, uh, in an environment, being a product of, of poverty, um, those trappings were there. We had to deal with them. Uh, and by the grace of God, um, I was very fortunate to, um, you know, make it out basically unscathed. High school was a cornucopia of sorts, man. I was all over the place and I didn't graduate from high school, Jaleel, uh, repeated the 10th grade. And, um, and fortunately, the Marine Corps had this 12J program, which means you didn't drop out. And within the first year of completing boot camp and your MOS school, you had to get your high school diploma or an equivalent. Got a GED met some cool cats while I was in the Marine Corps, and they really helped me navigate this notion in my mind that you had to be really smart to go to college. Right. Um, and they were just good guys, uh, humble guys serving in the community. That's how we met each other. And uh, after eight years of serving in the United States Marine Corps, man, I just thought that there was something different for me, had this yearning and um, got out and you know did everything from a collection agent to selling cars and what i thought was my dream job working at the u.s postal service um and quickly realized that there was something else that god wanted me to do and i had to really figure that out and and it was college and uh, i tried to get in a couple of colleges and edward waters was the only one that would accept me 
And so um, they nurtured me, poured into me, and the rest really just took off from there, man. You know, I think um, my childhood really prepared me for where I was moving. You know, we understood structure and hierarchy, even though it was rooted in the little boys and the big boys and the G's and the OG's, right? But innately, that was uh, an introduction to hierarchy and understanding that you just didn't move out of pocket. There were uh, ways in which you did things. And it was really easy to translate um, those things that were informal into the formal notion of democracy, advocacy, and those things. And so having went into the Marine Corps and being around a lot of young people who really want to get it right, um, but don't necessarily come with tone and tact. Um, and being able to add that allowed me to fill in a, a void that was needed. And so I found myself not necessarily wanting to be the advocate for the institution or the students, but it was just a natural progression, man. And, and interesting enough, Doc, I think that natural progression of, of you leading has what has transpired in your career. Right. Yeah. And so I want to dive back into that, but we'll do it after the break. It's HBCU 101. It's Jalil. It's Dr. Phil. You guys stay tuned. You don't want to miss it. We'll be right back. HBCU 101. Welcome back to HBCU 101. Welcome back to HBCU 101. I am your host, Jalil Thurman, and our special guest today is none other than Dr. Felton himself, president of Wiley College. Doc, it's been a pleasure so far. Yes, sir. But it's time for a little HBCU trivia, okay? Hall of Fame basketball player, Earl the Pearl Monroe, attended what university? I would, I'm going with the Rams of Winston-Salem State University. You are correct, Doc. You are correct. I, I figured you had a little basketball history. <laughs> now, Doc, let's get back into it. Before the break, we talked a little bit about your matriculation and your career and how your experience at Edward Waters kind of like fell on you and you kind of just ran with it. That's yes, what you've sir. been able to do just in general with your career. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about it. From Murray State, Livingstone College, Wilberforce to now Wiley, how has that experience been just kind of transitioning from university to university, and, and what is it like now? It really has been um, easy, to okay. be quite honest with you. I live on the extra mile. So the highway is not crowded. There's okay. no traffic. Um, I am not the smartest, but you're hard pressed to find somebody that's gonna work harder than I do. Okay. And um, everywhere I've been, I think uh, my work and being intentional about signing my work with the mark of excellence um, has allowed me to really move um, quickly. And um, just being really passionate about the work, education is something that you can really be passionate about uh, and the impact that it has. And uh, coming from Murray State to Livingstone, I mean, I knew what the HBCU space was, but as a student, you don't understand what it really means, um, you know, to people collectively, to the space. And so as an administrator, I thoroughly enjoyed what I was doing and it did not feel like labor. And so, um, you know, you pour into things that you're passionate about and I was able to have some successes that propelled me from executive assistant all the way up to chief operating officer at Livingstone College. You said you live on the extra mile, right? And your dedication shows for itself. And that's so true because I seen what Wiley College looked like before you got there. And then I've been able to see and experience and witness the energy and vibe actually in Marshall, Texas, at Wiley College, home of the great debaters. Yes, sir. Now, when you became president, what did that mean to you? Um, 
Jaleel, you know um, that I'm a student of history and um, Wiley is replete with history. In fact, I think Wiley is inextricably interwoven into the fabric of America, mm -hmm. um, a, a space where social justice is a way of life. Um, the Freedmen's Act um, and Freedmen's Aid Society came together to put together an institution for people of color to educate kids in elementary and secondary education. And born out of that was this um, intentionality to always advocate for the least of us. Those things fit mesh, in fact, with my spirit and who I am. And so to be able to come to an institution that is storied, um, to be, a, be able to come to an institution that human sweat troved uh, the grounds, the. Texas Southern University's uh, Thurgood Marshall School of Law is affectionately known as the house that Heman Sweat built. And Heman Sweat sued the state of Texas to get into UT Austin's law school. And his case was the foundational case for Brown v. Board of Education. And so when you have those giants uh, on your campus all the way up to the modern day, um, uh, young men and women who are advocating uh, on on many different ways and, and leaving here and becoming social advocates, um, lawyers, doctors. Um, it is just something that you remember reading about it and you get to feel the spirit of the ancestors in the clouds um, and you get to see it in action. It's just a perfect uh, fit for me. Uh, and I'm, I'm just grateful to be at this storied institution that really is preaching a sermon every day through action. Yeah. And, and I agree. Right. I, I've seen how much the student body and the administration love you and adore you and have just are glad that you're there because you've been able to change the narrative and enhance the experience at Wiley, at Wiley College, and I was able to witness it firsthand. So I know what that energy is like in Wildcat Nation. Now, yeah, it's, it's pretty special. Um, I've had 16 predecessors. All of them have done the best that they could do with the resources that they had. Yeah. And I have a really special team around me. And I think our students, no shade anywhere else, really are some of the kindest kids, man, in the world. Like, yo, I've, I've, I'm on campus and they speak every day, everywhere I see them. Yeah. Um, you know, there's some that, you know, throw a little smoke at me every now and then. But that's, you know, we have a couple of different Differences, but at the end of the day, we're wearing the same jersey. Uh, and I, I'm my biggest challenge is to get everybody here, student, faculty, staff, administrator, yeah. alumni, to understand that we're wearing the same jersey. Yeah. And so we're on the same team and we're trying to win collectively. Um, and I'm, I'm grateful for the receptivity uh, of uh, all the constituents. And I'm really happy that the team here with me, we've been able to do some, some good stuff. No, I, I definitely agree. And, and what I want to dive into after the break is how you've been able to take your love for education to not only continue it, but then also share that with other leaders of like yourself. It's HBCU 101. It's Jalil. It's Dr. Felton. You guys stay tuned. We'll be right back. It's time now for HBCU Wall Street 101s. More than 88 million U.S. adults have pre-diabetes and more than 84% of them, 84% do not know that they have it. It's Diabetes Awareness Month. Know your status. We'll be right back. HBCU 101. Welcome back to HBCU 101. Welcome back to HBCU 101. I'm Jalil. And I have Dr. Felton with me. Wiley College is in the building. Yes, sir. Doc, you have a real love for education. I mean, you, you, you're at the highest point in any, you know, uh, college kind of career as being a president. However, you didn't stop there. You, you, you pursued your Ph.D. at Jackson State University. Why? 
Um, when I was the SGA president, Jaleel, I saw Dr. Jimmy Jenkins uh, wrestle with the board over the open door admissions. And I knew then I wanted to do what he did. I wanted to advocate for the least of us. And so I asked him, how do I do that? He told me I needed a terminal degree, need to get a law degree or a PhD. And I was like, yeah, I'll go get a law degree. So I did that first. Uh, and then while I was at Murray State University, I met a gentleman who told me about the program at Jackson State University. Uh, and I figured I was sort of in a state where I had time and it wouldn't hurt me to get the PhD. So I went and, and got the PhD to make sure that I was not discriminated against, I even though some of the greatest HBCU presidents, Norman Francis, for one, uh, have law degrees, right? Um, and so I, I wanted to make sure that when I got to the table, I wasn't excluded because I didn't have, quote unquote, uh, a terminal degree. Um, so now I have that and a little bit of some more. Okay. Um, so okay. That, that's what pushed me to Jackson State. Uh, okay. Now, you just touched on another thing of being able to be an advocate, being able to spread the love, passion, and education. Mm -hmm. Is that the passion that, that fueled health? Yeah, the Higher Education Leadership Foundation was born out of frustration. Went to conferences, and I didn't see anything that spoke to me as a young administrator. Um, I didn't see anything that that allowed for um, communities of practitioners to come together, lift each other up, inspire each other, and and be about the business of leading. And so, with uh, co-founders Melva Williams of Southern University, Shreveport, and uh, Alfred Anthony Pinkard, president of Wilberforce University and Greg Dees here at, at Wiley, we set out to do something different. We saw a void, we ran to it, and we wanted to fill it. And now, five years later, some 300 different fellows, uh, six of us have become HBC, five HBCU presidents, one's a community college president. Um, we've just been astonished at what has happened uh, by simply listening to the voice um, that is impregnated by God, you know, and nurturing it with with uh, the practice of loving Jesus Christ, man, that, that just leads you in a space where you're really close to the hot stove, right, right where you're supposed to be. Um, and we've been able to do what we really enjoy doing, which is serving people, helping, strengthening uh, the pipeline for HBCU leadership. HBCU centric, not mad with any other type of institution. It really is uh, the primary focus is to ensure that our schools have strong, disciplined, um, highly skilled leaders leading at the top. And that's essential. Uh, and that's extremely yeah. important. I think that the state of HBCUs today need that type of pivot and need that type of education in order to help continue to grow so that way we can be sustainable uh, for a yeah. long period of time. You're, you're absolutely right. Now, Doc, before we let you go, we always play a game. It's called I Got Five on it, okay? Okay. I Got Five on it is this or that. You choose who or what you may have five on, okay? Okay. All right, let's go. Now, this year, you know, football season hasn't been the same. But if football season was in effect, we're going to go We're gonna go back to Florida. We're going to go to the Florida Classic. Who would you have five on? Bethune Cookman or FAMU? I'm going with the privates, so I'm going with Bethune Cookman. You okay. know, I've been in the private space at the HBCU sector, uh, and and you can get to Bethune or Daytona quicker than you can to uh, Tallahassee. So I'm going with Bethune. <laughs> I got you. And we're gonna keep it in the football space. We're gonna talk another classic, one that everyone loves, that we won't be able to see during this Thanksgiving holiday, and mm. the Bayou Classic. Who would, you, who would you take, Doc, Southern or Grambling? Well, you know, my frat brother is the president of the Southern system, Dr. Ray Belton. And then my frat brother is the president of Grambling, uh, Rick Gallo. So I'm just going to have to close my eyes and just <laughs> land on neither one of them. I got, I got to go with both of them, bro. It's going to end in a tie this year. It end it's going to end in a tie this year, bro. I got you. <laughs> Doc, before we let you go, please let the people know where they can find you, health, and, of course, Wiley College. 
First, I want to say thank you, Jaleel, for having me. Um, I really appreciate what you're doing. You are blessed. Uh, and I pray that God continues to cover you um, and show you uh, all the riches that are waiting for you, not humanly, but but heavenly. Um, www.wileyc.edu is where you can find us here, the home of the great debaters, Otis west of the Mississippi accredited institution, uh, historically black college. And the Higher Education Leadership Foundation can be found at www.heleaders, heleaders.org. Um, really excited uh, for the opportunity to be here, Jalil, and am forever indebted for this opportunity, man. Nah, Doc, I appreciate you for taking time. As a university president, there's so many other places that you could have been in the world but you're here with me, and I appreciate My you for that. My man. It's HBCU 101. It's Dr. Felton. Stay tuned. It's time for Did You Know? Brought to you by HBCU Pride. Did you know that the movies Stomp the Yard and Drumline were both filmed at Clark Atlanta University? Hmm, which one is your favorite? Stop the Yard or Drumline? Both filmed at CAU. We will see you right after the break. HBCU 101. Welcome back to HBCU 101. Today's Wear Brim Spotlight is Tuskegee alum and author of Hey Tuskegee, Robert Constant. Hey Tuskegee is a children's book that follows siblings Robbie and Sanaya as they relive the outstanding accomplishments of iconic African Americans, including the university's founder, Booker T. Washington. Take in the spirit and pageantry of homecoming as the marching Crimson Pipers entertain and lead more than 30,000 fans in singing the university's signature songs. If you know someone who should be highlighted on our Wear Brim Spotlight, reach out to us at info at hbcu101.com. Jalil, back to you. I'd like to give a special thank you and shout out to Dr. Felton for giving us the scoop on everything Wiley College, his career, and of course, health. For the entire crew, I am your host, Jalil Thurman, and I'll see you next week.